every time I finish an album, I'm always like, oh my God, you know, what am I, what am I going to do next? Like, even for the next album, after some things break, all I've got at the moment is two verses, you know, for a song called Gabriella, but I love the verses so much. And for this time, for some things break, you know, I was, I met a guy called Jimmy Hogarth at um, a, a Spotify writing camp at the end of 2019. Uh, Jimmy is a legendary record producer. He's done everything from Amy Winehouse to Sia to Corin Bailey Ray to, um, he co-wrote um, Jenny Don't Be Hasty and Warwick Avenue. And he's just done the new Anoni record, which is phenomenal. And anyway, we became friends <laughs> and we started writing with loads of different artists and doing songs with them for their projects. And and then there was a guy called John Green who worked at Jimmy's studio, who was a lovely man. And at the time I'd had, I'd started to kind of um, get a bit more traction in the co-writing game via an amazing artist called Holly Humberstone, who's a great friend of mine and just a wonderful, just an unreal songwriter. And we'd had a few songs. And so I meet John and he's like really in that game. And he's like, we're talking about that. And I'm kind of like, see, I know who he is, you know, he's a legend. So I'm like seeking his counsel a bit. And I'm like, let's write some songs together. And I was really into country music at the time. And it's kind of a funny story, but in a way, John and Jimmy kind of, I've said this to them, so I don't think they might be saying, but they kind of, they played my hand a bit because I was like, let's get together and write some songs for like Tim McGraw and we'll send, we'll write songs to Tim McGraw. We'll send them to the manager and happy days. You know what I mean? In my, my in my sick mind, I was celebrating the, I was celebrating the Grammy, you know, that's how delusional I can be. And um, so we write these two, I, I've, I've just gone through a breakup, but like a, I was with someone during the pandemic and we were living together and she was an awesome person. And it's just, you know, we, 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 we um, grew apart. And uh, I went into the studio feeling away and I wrote, we with John and Jimmy, we, we wrote two songs, one called I'm Always Saying Sorry, which the album opens with, and one called Some Things Break, which is like in the middle of the album. It's just a classic kind of acceptance of a love loss piano ballad. And um, Jimmy's such a seasoned so sonic wizard, as well as a great songwriter that John's playing the piano. It sounds amazing. I'm in a, a separate room singing and there's like separate, there's like a sliding door in Jimmy's studio, so there's separation. And I'm like, okay, cool. I kind of forget about the songs. And then a week or two later, Jimmy sends me the bounces of I'm always saying sorry and some things break. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this sounds so good. Like, I love this so much. And immediately I was like, not immediately, but soon after I was like, Jimmy's got to produce the album. You know, I was on the phone to Mark, my manager, just like, um, man, I love these, you know, I, w I want these for myself. Of course, I still, I think, I think I still pushed for us to send them to whoever, you know, but, um, and I just really loved them. And then I was like, we, we opened the conversation with Jimmy and he was just so gracious and patient and he's such an artist, you know, he's such a humble guy and it, he's done amazing things. And then we started just cooking and writing more songs. And um, so at that point, once I had a few things, I was like, I love this that kind of um, opened the, the floodgates to like be calling other sisters and brothers, like, right, come to the studio, let's try this, let's try this. And we wrote like 30 songs. I think we scrapped about 20 songs or something. And we were very, again, thanks to less fear, I was, I was more um, assiduous with the choices, you know, and still being creative and kind of spray gunning ideas out. And um, around this time, I met a guy called Jamie Squire, who I'd met before, years ago he's a um the md and piano player in 1975 me and him and jimmy worked on two songs on their last album together and i immediately was just like feeling this vibe from jamie like this guy is, you know like one of those guys who can play play everything he's just like a joke you know what i mean it's like so good but he's not like um posh with it you know he's a songwriter at heart and i i i, I my perception of him is that all the instruments and stuff, which he may well be the best in the world at, are just tools for songwriting. You know, that's just a tool for songwriting. So he came to the studio. We wrote a song called Moon Landing Hoax with our friend Sam Klempner. And that, again, happened by accident. Me, Sam and Jimmy had two, sorry, me, Sam Klempner and Jamie Squire had two days together. On the first day, we we wrote a song like a Pussycat Dolls kind of song, you know, trying to like a pop thing, you know, for pitch. And the second day I came in and I was just one of those days where I was just feeling really broken and 
fed up of a few things and Jamie started playing these chords and we wrote that song in like two hours. Sam bounced it. I was like, I love this. You know, um, can we send the stems to Jimmy so he can have a play on it? We did. Jamie came in the studio with Jimmy, tried to, um, we tried to replicate, we tried to get Jamie to play the piano part again and it was never the same. It was never, it wasn't even close. So we like, we have to use a piano from Sam's day. Jimmy was like, we can get a better vocal. I was like, I don't know, but we managed to get one just. Um, and so that kind of process started happening. And then we'd jam more and more. John would come in, Jamie Squire would come in. Um, at, around this time, I met a really good friend. My manager's friend is a guy called Matty Smith. And um, he's like uh, one of these guys who's just like such an artist, he's such a talent, never had a song out, never had a publishing deal, never had a record deal, lives on a houseboat with his girlfriend is a vegan, you know, I'm like painting the, like the nicest, basically it's like an angel. And um, I meet, I go over to his, I'm like, yeah, I, I've always loved writing with people who, like I said, haven't been um, spun out by the game. And I like, and he, he was the first person in a long time that was really honest with me, potentially brutal with me. I'd like, I'd send him ideas and he'd be like, this isn't good enough. Do you know what I mean? Like, so there was a trust there immediately. And he gave me the title, Breaking the Weather, which I then wrote with, um, Jimmy and John and he also co-wrote the second verse of Don't Give Up on Light which finishes the album so my heart was really open to all these ideas but in answer to your first question once I heard something's breaking I'm always saying sorry from Jimmy I was like okay we're on you know